Hey, hey Parker. Nice How are you? Good to I'm see well. you. Yeah, welcome to Southern Ken. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I would say. What do you say we grab a table? That sounds perfect. All right, let's do it. Awesome. So this is this is our bourbon Thank sampler. Thank you. Welcome. And, I love uh, their uniform with the uh, yeah, <laughs> with the plaid and it's the, real country. Yeah, yeah, it is country <laughs> for sure. So this this is such a cool little item that we make here. Um, our beverage director is really in the in the craft bourbons and small batch distilleries, and he actually infuses his own bourbons with different flavors. So guests that come in here can oh. kind of have a sampler of, of different flavored bourbons. Thank okay. you. Welcome, so, enjoy. Uh, sampling of different bourbons, and it is local? Uh, no, no, the bourbons aren't local, although we do have some local bourbons on our menu. We have over, actually over 100 whiskeys and bourbons on the menu, so pretty comprehensive if you're a brown, brown liquor drinker. Um, but this one, like, he's got a spiced cranberry bourbon, an apple crumble bourbon, and a vanilla coffee, which is my favorite. Wow, and I've, yeah. just, I've, I've just known about regular bourbon, so this new infusion with bourbon is really... Yeah, I mean, bourbon is ethereal, right? I mean, it's it's sweet, it's an after-dinner drink, it's a before-dinner drink, it really, it hits on all notes, yeah. for sure. So the whole Southern thing, tell me about... Is it common to have a Southern restaurant in I, Boston? I would say it's a little uncommon, but yeah. I think it's been picking up popularity. I've known it's a few more places have opened since we've opened Southern Yeah, Ken. you're setting the precedent a little well, bit. Well, I, I think there's a demographic for it. I think people really identify with yeah. comfort food. Yeah. Um, this isn't you know, like a barbecue. No, it's no, like no. A different kind you know, of Southern. Often, often a misconception. Um, Southern Kent, we do have some barbecued items and some sauces of, of different regions of the South right. uh, that are represented on the menu. However, it's, this is really about soul food, right? This yeah. is about oh, yeah. um, kind of relaxing, you know, sitting around a table, enjoying the people that you're with, and, and enjoying some really tasty, hearty food. Yeah, a little like Southern, a little slower pace. That's uh, it. Drinking, but yeah, to yeah, yeah you, gotta, in. you gotta slow down and, and you know that, appreciate the finer things. Right, because you lived there, right? I did. I, I lived in the South for uh, years. Um, after I was in culinary school, I moved down to uh, Dallas, Texas, and I, I wouldn't consider it Southern food, more Southwestern kind of flair. Right. Um, but certainly the barbecue aspect is huge down there. Um, and then after a few years, I moved to Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, I got an amazing opportunity with a, uh, a very bougie hotel um, to kind of have free reign and, and reinvent it and rebrand the restaurant that I was at. Oh, very um, cool. Where, you know, we, all we did was Southern food. And um, that was really where I got my first experience in cooking Southern food, identifying with the culture and the importance of the food at the table. Right. Um, and, and, you know, Southern food is so much about bringing people together um, to, to enjoy a good memory. Uh, it's about hospitality. And uh, you know, it, there's certainly some amazing food there. Yeah. So it was really fun to bring that to Boston. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of the restaurants that you oversee. Yeah, we in your we, role. We currently have five restaurants, yeah. and we're about to open our sixth in the spring. Um, but yeah, this this has been a, a passion project for me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, having lived in the South for an extended length of time. Right. Um, and identifying with this food and, and well, knowing that people here haven't had it. They haven't had it. And well, they haven't had it like this. I mean, I know deviled eggs, but this is <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah, that's deviled eggs on crack. Oh my goodness. So Look at that we, mustard seed. What do we have here? We yeah, have tobacco. A, a little we? mustard seed caviar. We uh, we take the uh, the egg mixture and we, we add a little bit of truffle oil to it. Got a pickled onion there too. It's got some pickled shallots <laughs> on it. It's got some uh, Benton's country ham that's been dried out. A little dill. Uh, a little bit of dill wow. and a little bit of trout roe. Tra oh, it's trout roe. Yeah. Wow, okay. And what right. do you have? A so I'm, I'm having she crab soup. And a, a lot of people do, don't even know what she crab soup is. And when I first moved to Charleston, I was one of those people that was like, what is a she crab soup? You know, like, why not have clam chowder? <laughs> right, right. Um, and, and it was introduced to me, and I instantly fell in love with it. And what it is, is it's almost like a crab bisque, but there's the addition of crab roe, which hence the name oh, she crab, oh, um, it, which it. gives it a really briny kind of seafood ocean flavor. Right. Um, and by all means, try it, check okay. it out. <laughs> yeah, love it. And you don't get a chance to eat at these restaurants often, do you? No, no, I work a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but usually when family comes to town, it's always nice to take them and show them what, what I've been up to and, uh, you know, kind of share the experience. I mean, we're really proud of the different brands that we've created. Right, with all these different flavors, you must be in heaven as a chef That's it. to be it's, able to oversee these restaurants that are so different and unique. I got to tell you, it's one of the cooler things in my job is, you know, not being pigeonholed into just Italian or just, you know, Asian or, or just Southern. Right. Um, it kind of gives you that ability to flex all different kinds of muscles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. 
Shall we try some bourbon? Yes, I mean, it's, it is afternoon after all. Absolutely. Which one are you doing? The I'm spice? doing the spice cranberry. Okay, and I'll, I guess I'll do the vanilla coffee. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. No sip. Ah. It's like water. It's so smooth. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> that good? Yeah, vanilla. Vanilla. What a nice atmosphere in here. Yeah. It must be cool to um, to have all the different restaurants to design too. I mean, your designers. It's different from home design in a way. I mean, look, I mean just look at this this whole character you're building, this world. Yeah. yeah. And, our design team is pretty amazing. Uh, we use Morris Nathanson out of uh, Rhode Island, and uh, the, the firm has done all of our restaurants, and I'm always amazed by how they create these spaces in this environment and how, how they all kind of are, are matched up perfectly with the concept. Right, and they, they just, just dial it right. in. Yeah. They just dial it yeah. in. And they can do each one separately and uniquely, which is crazy. I mean, this plaid going with the outfits of the, the servers. <laughs> yeah. Going yeah. with the big American flags. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's we actually use two teams. We have so we have one that does the restaurant design, and then we have a creative team uh, named Stebbins and Partner, and and those guys equally as amazing and the two of them work together and create the total experience so Stebbins does a lot of our branding and they do a lot of the uh, creative touches and flares like our our liquor menu is absolutely amazing it's called Pappy's Journal and Pappy's it's, Journal and it's 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 reminiscent of what a uh, you know a southern farmer would you know write in his, his field journal uh, all these little notes about things that you know he noticed when he was farming about how to make things better um, so it's got that handwritten kind of feel oh, to it with, cool. you know, the uh, the drink stains on it and everything that are already, oh, you really know, authentic. baked into it. Yeah, to make it feel feel more authentic. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. That's really stagecraft in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. And that's an experience for you. And so it's filling up already. I mean, we got here early and it's filling up already. So who, who is your clientele? Right from this local area or all over Boston? I mean, how's the word yeah. spreading? Yeah, so, I mean, Assembly Row is such... Uh, an amazing area right now. I mean, it's it's really experienced a renaissance. It's blowing up. There's new buildings going up all around it. Um, and what amazes me is that the foot traffic continues to grow and grow and grow. Okay. Here, we <laughs> hey. Here we go. We have our fried green tomatoes. Awesome. And one of our guest favorites are Bayou tacos. Oh wow. Can awesome. I assist you with anything else right now? <laughs> Looking good. Thank I think you. We're good to go. So. These are two of my faves. All right, this is alligator tacos. Alligator tacos. Yeah, yeah. And, and gator's the thing in the south. Um, obviously, a lot of people haven't had it, so this is a great opportunity for them to try something new. And is this like octopus in terms of how you cook it? And it is, sure that yeah. if you overcook it, it's just, you know? That's right, that's right. If, if you overcook it, you ruin it. If you undercook it, you ruin it. You really just have to kind of nail it down. Yeah. And um, I actually use the same technique that I cook my octopus to cook my alligator, which is sous vide, under backing and it just tenderizes it really well. And I, I think I think some people think it's not really a um, alligator because it's tender. Right. But this is the way to do it. Right, they, they're used to chewy or, or never heard of it at all? Yeah, they just, I think there's a preconceived notion that alligator is chewy. And if it's prepared wrong, yeah, it right. can be. Yeah. And so you, you um, do this whole incubation thing and you do this, you're conceptualizing all the time. Yeah. With these new restaurants. So you have five now, you said? We have five. And, and how many coming? We're, well, who knows for now. How big is um, your empire? That's <laughs> what I mean. Well, it, it, <laughs> you know it's I mean? certainly not my empire. <laughs> um, but um, we're, we're, we're looking to expand and we're looking. The hardest thing with, with building restaurants is finding great locations that work with a concept. Yeah, where are the other locations? Yeah, uh, well, we have a, a kind of like a, a beer bar uh, called the Tap Trail House that's in Faneuil Hall. Uh, we have Wink and Nod, uh, which is a craft cocktail speakeasy with a chef incubator program, which is really interesting. Right, I've heard a little bit about that. That is fascinating. Yeah, that, that one's in the South End, and I'll, I'll briefly tell you about that. So, a sh we invite a oh, chef in. We have more have coming. All right. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Yes, now that is Southern. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Right, cool. <laughs> so go ahead, um, what you're saying. So we invite a chef to come into our, our restaurant for six months at a time and give them the creative freedom to kind of run their own concept and also manage the business aspects of running a kitchen, okay? So there's no real label on the restaurant, it's just a, I mean, it's a... 
Is yeah. it a blank slate for the chef for six months? It, it is. It's essentially they come in and they, they run the food program at the restaurant. And we, we supply the service and, and obviously our, our, our drink menus, which are fantastic. Um, but they really have an opportunity to come in and beta test a restaurant prior to trying to open their own. And, you know, it really helps them get into an ownership situation without all the risk, right? right. Because they don't have to put a ton of money up. Right, and see they if it... And see if it works yes, and see exactly. if they can do it and see if it's something that they like. Um, so it's a very unique program. Is that common all over the country? Is this one of your You know, new I, I know of maybe three or four other ones in the entire so nation. So smart. Um, and, and it took us a while to kind of develop it and get the, get the momentum behind it. But uh, at, at this point, the program's doing well. We have a lot of interest in people doing it. We, we're, we're fortunate that we have to, the pick of the litter as to who the chefs will be. Right. Um, and we also, you know, we, we feel an obligation to keep it interesting for the neighborhood. So we try to mix up the concepts. So oh, that, but then if they get used to this after six months, they're crying. Oh, but there they might be a restaurant coming. They can go I'll to go the, there. That's right. They can go to the oh, chef's brilliant. own restaurant. The whole so, thing's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, it's it's been rewarding for me to be a part of that and, and get to know these young and upcoming chefs and yeah. see where their passions are. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. Fried green tomatoes. Fried green Nothing tomatoes. Gets, well, I guess yes. fried chicken gets more southern. This is, this is pushing you outside of the comfort zone because a lot of people aren't even familiar that green tomatoes tomato can be green. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, or you um, should eat them if they are. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what I like about fried green tomatoes is they typically have a little bit more acidic flavor to them. Okay. So when we deep fry them, that acidity kind of, you know, cuts into that fattiness and makes it really nice, okay, and well balanced. Um, and we're pairing ours with a little green tomato chow chow. And chow chow is a green tomato relish, if you will, that gets cooked down and it's sweet and tangy. So it really plays nicely together on the mm -hmm. dish. All right, two, and then two of, course, of your favorites. I've oh. got to point this and baby out. And she brought out. that out. <laughs> we haven't even started. Yeah. Just keep chatting. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so this is the gussied up biscuit. And the gussied up biscuit is uh, obviously it's biscuits ginormous. Are, are of huge importance <laughs> in Southern cuisine. Absolutely. I mean, nobody has bread, they have biscuits. It's gravy. That's right. Biscuits and this and is the sausage sawmill gravy. Uh, so sausage cream gravy. I believe this guy's got a, a nice piece of uh, buttermilk fried chicken and then this gravy. It's just awesome. Now, how do you think this concept would work in the South? It, it's a little, like, it, it elevates its, you know, no offense, but a little bit, it's, it's a little more booty in some yeah, ways. Yeah, um... Not my homey, home cook, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Um, I think this restaurant would do fantastic in the South. Yeah. You know, I don't think we'd call it a Southern restaurant. It would just simply be a restaurant. Right, because right. there's a lot of places doing similar things to what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, but... What I think, I, I definitely think people would identify this. I mean, I got a lot of these recipes and learned the cooking techniques right. from people that have lived their whole life there. You know, it wasn't yes. me cracking open a book. Right. It was me watching my breakfast cooks make themselves staff meal. And I was like, oh, what, what'd you do there? How'd you do that? And how can I copy it? Right. Um, and, and they were uh, obviously took pity on me and showed me how to cook real Southern food. Wow, well, let's, I guess let's dig in Yeah, again. let's do it. So do you still, uh, do you still, act as a chef or are you managing all the time? I mean. Yeah, no, How much it's of it's, day a, it's is... a good mix. You'd be surprised. I mean, I, I have a chef for every restaurant um, that's responsible for the day to day, and you know, I kind of check in and and you know help support them in any way. And then we're always changing menus, so I'm involved in that creative process. Um, and then you know, looking forward to the new concepts and reconcepting. And uh, you know, we, it, the key to this business is always keeping it fresh right. and always making innovations and trying to make it better. And you know, looking looking at what the guest tells us and reacting to it quickly. That's the name of the game. Yeah. And so you don't actually come from the chef world. You don't have a background of chefs in your family. You have doctors in your family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there must be some similarity, though, in terms of like, the precision and the concentration, the focus. The... No, I mean, I there has to be some commonality. I definitely think there's a, a passion for looking at things analytically. Mm. Um, and also, you know, if it's, if it's what you love and you can be passionate about it and put a ton of hours into it and it not be so draining. And I know, you know, having that, that doctor background, I committed people. Right, because you were in med school. I, for, for not one, not yeah, two, I, not I three. Was, <laughs> I was pre-med. Um, I was totally thinking about going into it. Um, I had some doctors in my family and kind of felt like this was a cool thing. And I, you know, certainly see that they enjoy what they do and uh, got into it and, you know, finally at the point where I had to get serious about it going to med school or not, um, it just kind of struck me that it really wasn't my passion. Um, I'd been working in restaurants 
in high school and through college, um, and, and always found myself more happy when I was in a restaurant than I was in a classroom. And maybe that's not a big surprise. Um, but as I thought about it more seriously, I kind of felt like, you know, this is something I love to do. It's what I need to do. Um, so th at that point, I then um, left college and enrolled in culinary school. Um, and what did your family say? Um, you know what? I I'm very Follow fortunate. They were, they they were amazingly you. supportive. They only hated me for a few years. No, no I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, they, they, were, they were as supportive as can be and, uh, you know, wanted me to pursue my passion. Yeah, that's and and that's, that's what we did. Well, what the doctor world missed, the uh, restaurant world has gained. That's right. Well, <laughs> it, it's interesting. So my, my brother is an OB-GYN, and I, I've had conversations with him years ago where he would kind of express to me that um, the creative aspects of, of being a chef and cooking were, were much more interesting than you know what he was doing at the time right. and I don't know if his opinion changed through the years I'm assuming it has but you know he definitely thought that having that that kind of left brain activity was really kind of cool right, exactly cool I'd yeah. love to try the taco too you want to try the yeah let's, this let's one? mix it up I mean you know it's good because that's your job yeah we love the tacos I'm, I'm gonna go for a tomato myself and you said this was one of your favorites yeah Wow, and what's in here? So there's uh, the braised gator is actually um, outside of the it, gator. It's cooked in a, like a smoked tomato sauce, and then we do a black bean corn salsa, some pickled Fresno chilies on top. So that's it. It's just a really good taco. Mm. Give me some gator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really good. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh, here comes another one. Oh, oh, wow. Delivered by our executive chef, Sean Custer. Thank oh, no you, way. chef. Thank you, chef. Awesome. Who All gets right. the food delivered by the executive chef? And that guy is top. Yeah. He's the best. That's my dude. All, <laughs> All right. right. Talk to me about this. So you are having frogmore stew. I love that dish. Yeah. Probably You're my favorite dish too. on the menu. Yeah. Yes, that is awesome. So frogmore stew in, in the traditional low country fare is kind of like the, the New England version of a clam bake, right? Okay. Um, there's boiled shrimp and corn and, uh, and andouille sausage and you know whatever shellfish is around, right. oysters, and, and they dump it on the table and everyone kind of digs in. And you know, it's definitely a, uh, not a knife and fork kind of dish. Obviously, we took a little bit more highbrow spin on this. Mm -hmm. um, and this dish is uh, scallops, mussels, shrimp, um, tossed in a tomato okra broth that's just infused oh. with ocean flavors. Oh. Um, so some is corn, spicy? sausage. Yeah, the, the sausage have a little spicy note to it, mm -hmm. but it, I think you'll be okay. And of course, our signature cornbread. And our cornbread is the craziest thing on the menu, I'm Bar telling not. you right now. Really? I know you've had a lot of cornbread in your life. <laughs> This is the cornbread to beat all cornbreads. All right. I'm having some catfish. All right. When I think southern food, I think catfish. If I'm not doing fried chicken, I'm doing I'm doing yeah cornmeal dusted catfish. Yeah, with I a don't see Cajun a lot of catfish on menus here no. in Boston a lot. Yeah, no, it's it's not popular here, but I have to say it is a popular dish within this restaurant. When people know about um, catfish, they're coming in. Yeah, and this is it. I mean, this is this is how the southerners do fish. Oh, and look at the bed it's on. Yeah, this is Looks a little like uh, summer suck attack. Oh. So we've got some uh, butter beans or lima beans, uh, some corn, some uh, some peas in there. I mean, you got it all. Beautiful. Awesome. Dig in. Okay. So you say this is your favorite, and that was your favorite. I actually think... I have a lot of favorites, don't <laughs> I? Guilty. Yeah, what can I say? I mean, this is this is such good stuff. I look forward to coming to work here, you know? And I love the Andouille sausage. Mm. I love that smoky, like... Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Really delicious. Yeah. I want to taste the sauce. That's my spoon. I'll have the muscle right in it. <laughs> Try that. Can't go wrong with this. Oh dish. yeah. All right, let's do it. I can say I've never done this where we really just sort of switch them. <laughs> I mean, except at home. Yes, of course. All right. <laughs> we in? Yeah. What's the, what's, what's the best way in there? You want to get a little succotash on the bottom of your same? Yeah, you same? need the perfect bite. It's everything. Everything all at right once. in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That crust is delicious. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, isn't eating out just so much fun? Huh. I love that sauce on the top, too. Yeah. That little remoulade type. Yeah, a little Cajun remoulade. 
the beauty of this dish is the simplicity of it. It's all about just really fresh ingredients and not messing with them, just doing it right. But that's how you roll. That's how we do it, mm -hmm. absolutely. Fresh and local and sustainable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to get a little crazy? <laughs> okay, yes, I'm getting a bowl. That's so pretty. Awesome. All right, thank you, Chef. Beautiful. Awesome. So, Talk we've to got <laughs> our signature dish, chicken and waffles, all right? Chicken and waffles. Yeah, what a crazy combo, right? But it's one of those combos that is just, it's timeless. And it what's works the, so what's beautifully. the sauce with it? So we have a few sauces. And, something and, sweet? Or? Yeah. Well, we got to have maple syrup with your waffle, okay. right? But I, I wanted to do a, a little different take than the traditional chicken and waffles, which is simply just fried chicken, waffles, you know, breakfast waffles and some maple but syrup. But that's a southern staple? You mean they have that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is good late night food in the south. Okay. <laughs> After the, the bars. Um, but we do a cheddar chive waffle. So it's got a really interesting texture. It's, you know, it's like cheesy and decadent. Um, and we serve it with a, a Fresno infused maple syrup. So it's got a little spice and a little heat wow. behind it. Oh, that is um, the fried intricate. chicken is, this fried chicken is awesome. Um, we put a, a 24 hour brine on it and then we, um, we give it a light buttermilk coating and then, you know, double dip it, do the whole thing. And we have these really cool pressure fryers that when you cook chicken in them, it makes it a lot lighter and less greasy. So the chicken has a nice light airy kind of texture to it and it's really kind of clean on the palate. And then of course we make our own Louisiana honey hot sauce, which you can't have fried chicken without hot sauce, right? <laughs> no, awesome. you can't. You're having a, uh, a Berkshire brined pork chop with some wilted mustard greens, a little bit of apricot, some smoky bacon and a fried egg on top. And this is just a nice little onion kind of sauce on there. Kind of think of the smothered pork chop, if you will. All right, yeah, that's a commitment. Wow, everything right. here is just over the top, honestly. Thanks, thanks. Are you ready to dig in? I, 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 all right, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it again. Your family, do they make you cook all the time? Um, you know what, I still enjoy cooking at home, and uh, it's actually one of the things I, I look forward to most on a day off is kind of, uh, you know, connecting with the family at home. I mean, that's what got me into this business in the first place, and that's, you know, where the, the kind of uh, the passion lies. Gourmet though, every night? No, I wouldn't I mean, say do I gourmet. This? I mean, no. I'm in your home. And no, I'm no, this not bit? at all, not at all. Um, Tiny bit. You know, I, there, there are nights I, I love making pizza. Okay. Right? And, and I bet you know, make a good pizza garlic too. nuts and fun things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every now and then we, we, we get foodie, but for the most part, we don't. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of, that's work. This is not work. And, you know, it's about more about the, the experience of getting together, sharing the day. I love this too. Mm. And the egg on the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the part where you gotta get a little dirty oh, if I you're gonna eat some southern up. food. <laughs> so I'm getting in with my hands here. Go in. I'm rolling my sleeves in preparation. All right. <laughs> All right, you ready to swap? <laughs> yeah, I feel like you lift and I sh and I shuffle over. That's right, we've got it worked out. <laughs> we have a system now. We're awesome. gonna tour the country just trying, <laughs> trying dishes and... <laughs> I feel a show coming up, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let me All see. Right. You're oh in? goodness, I am. I need a little bit of this on the top. Is this kind of spicy? Yeah, it's a little spicy. Okay, so maybe you're a little not less. a spice I'm addict. A little, I am. Go light not on an it. addict of a spice. But. <laughs> Good thing your sleeves are rolled up too. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that is really. There's a really good reason that fried chicken is still popular. That is really, really good. Yeah. All right, one more bite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. Southern living, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Southern living, baby.